Well, my first guest tonight was, of course, a cast member on SCTV, one of the greatest shows of all time. He's also appeared in numerous films, including Father of the Bride 1 and 2 and Mars Attacks. On Sunday, you can see him in Alice in Wonderland, right here on good old budget-cutting NBC. Please welcome the always hilarious Martin Short. <laughs> Lovely crowd. Andrew, Hi. how the hell are you? Very, very good. Excellent. Are you going to stand up again? Just because I need to know, because I'm supposed to stand up if you do. Are you serious? Yeah, it's part of the talk show rule. See? You want to edit that last decision of yours. There'll be no editing tonight. Oh, really? Uh... <laughs> I'm confused. Hey, let's move on. Uh, uh, sure. But you, you, yeah. 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 You, uh, Conan O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're a good man. Thank you. I, I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm well, also I'm thrilled, thrilled to be here. People don't know that uh, there's a reunion. Uh, I've always been an SCTV nut, one of my favorite shows. There's a reunion in Aspen at the Comedy Festival, and I've been asked to moderate it. Yes. It's a big honor for me, and I'm going to, to do this thing in about a week, and we're looking at clips, and we're all howling today looking at the clip of you doing Jerry Lewis, which I had forgotten how funny your Jerry Lewis is. Could you please, could I have a little Jerry? Well, you know, there are two Jerry's. Uh, there are two Jerry's. There's the young Jerry, you know, gotta get my own tuxedo press lap! There's that one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for remembering. But then there's, as Jerry aged, he became more profound. And I always imagined that it was like Jerry had a lozenge in his mouth. And he was sucking the lozenges, and he talked about life. And he would say things like, the problem with Hollywood is that they're afraid of a perfectionist. Because the Hollywood of today is not the Hollywood that I knew from then. Because now it's run by 12-year-olds who don't know from Cinderella, who are only worried about big hoidens and snames, and they don't care. <laughs> and, and, and so what I would do is kind of combine the two Jerry's and pieces like, you know, scenes from An Idiot's Marriage, right, which was funny. Bergman and Jerry, and right. stuff like that. Yeah. It was hilarious stuff. We were... Uh we were also looking at the, th the thing you did, Ir Irving Cohen, the, uh, the songwriter. Irving Cohen was a, uh, was a uh, yeah, he's a, an, an 89-year-old songwriter who writes 15 songs a day at the Brill Building, all of them bad. You know? <laughs> so, for example, uh -huh. if you were here today, he'd, you know, for example, pull out his cigar right. and say, Give me a C! A bouncy C! <laughs> Brian, you're quite a guy. I'd say you stand about oh so high. You got Andy Richter, and that's a good thing. But sometimes you work blue, and that ain't so good. Da da da, d d d, whatever the hell else you want to put in there. <laughs> yeah. Hey. This is like a medley of old, old, old triumphs, isn't it? Yes, yes, it certainly is. Well, when did you start? At what age? Because obviously you were doing characters from very young. What, what did you start doing characters? What made you want to... I think that, you know, I, uh, you know, when you grow up in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, it's... it's are you serious? No, they're not, they're not from there. Oh, they're <laughs> just saying, isn't, how about growing up there? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, would, I had a tape recorder that I would tape things, you know, all the time. I would, you know, I would hide under Christmas dinner. I'd put the tape recorder underneath, and like in 1966, I was 16, I put the tape recorder underneath the uh, dining room table, just to hear the fights, you know. You want dark meat? Well, there's dark meat on that GD leg. Pick up the leg and chop the dark meat. That would be my father. And then years <laughs> later... A wonderful character. Oh, yeah, he was a fun guy. And so years later, I would, you know, take that character and make him into a character. There was a woman who lived down the street, um, whose name I won't repeat, of course, because of the whole lawsuit thing. But <laughs> she, she was like, she was like about, you know... 300 pounds and she'd sit in her chair she had eight kids and she'd mother by just screaming at them like that shut up and, and she had a she had a a coffee mug would be filled with camel cigarettes and she'd always be drinking a slurpee one a big freezy slurpee so and she was obsessed with john kennedy mm -hmm. so she'd be saying you know 
the thing is about President Kennedy, he was what they call a working olic. That's what they called it. Randy, stop that banging up there! <laughs> I'd like to blast the last one more year. Thank you very much. But he was what? And then she slipped the slurpee. Brain freeze. She always can brain freeze. She always can freeze. So one day, one day I brought a little tape recorder down and taped this maniac. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in 19 like you know 89, I put her in a special. I did her care. So it's it's you constantly you know you. I, I think that life is broader than anything you'd ever dream of doing. Yeah. Well, people wouldn't believe that that's a real character. Oh yeah. Louise, you put that Kremlin back in, lady. <laughs> Never leave the chair. Stop! Get over here, Stefan! You get up there and tell Randy that cookie for you! But anyway, and when Jackie married Onassis... Rain freeze! Rain freeze! It was frightening. frightening. Well, you get to do... Uh, people are raving you. In Little Me, you get to do a lot of different uh, characters. I did many characters. Eight and characters. Uh, people are saying there, there's Tony Buzz. Oh, please. You know, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> rave shave. You know, when, when people call me this kind of Broadway's Count Prince of mirth and laughter, I guess I say with all due respect, family circle, I don't get it. Because that's their opinion, not me. I don't, you know, if a Tony comes my way, because certainly I'm paying enough money for it, I would say what a joy. Uh huh. I was nominated once before mm -hmm. in 93, lost to an, some idiot. You know? <laughs> Let's no, mention I mean, his I mean, name. Ben Carver, brilliant, brilliant performer. Right. We'll probably be nominated again this year. And, and you've done the uh, Tonys as a presenter, right? I, I actually bombed. So one of the, you know, we all bomb. Don't know what you're talking you about. You know, uh, <laughs> really? But Tell I me bombed, of this bombing. I bombed so badly on the Tonys once. I, it was the following year. I'd been nominated. I lost. Bernadette Peters and I were both nominated, both in the same show. We lost. And the next year, they thought it'd be cute to have us come out and present. And I had this joke. And it wasn't... It wasn't, I didn't know how it would play, and I kept running it past me, but the joke was, I said, hey, Bernadette, I haven't worn this tuxedo since last year's Tony Awards. She says, how do you know? Because I just found Sally Kirkland's home number in this pocket. Exactly. So, <laughs> but you know, so I, I was saying, geez, I don't know, I mean, it could be kind of like hip and esoteric, or it could be like nothing, and by the way, it was nothing, but I was, I was running it past people in the green room, mm -hmm. you know. I, Tony Randall was there, and I said, Tony, what do you think of this line? He said, Martin, I think it is too inside. <laughs> what, if, what if you say you reached into your pocket and put out Carol Channing's brassiere? What if you say that? I said, no. <laughs> yeah, really. It's working. You know what I'm saying? He's right. And, uh, yeah, and George Abbott, the, he was 107 at the time, he's now dead. Uh, he was a 107-year-old producer being honored that night. <laughs> I said, Mr. Abbott. I said, Mr. Abbott. Mr. But Abbott. he was alive at the time. Well, if you call that living. I said, Mr. Abbott. I said, Mr. Abbott, what do you think of this line? Ba -ba -ba. Sally Kirkland's home number. He went, <laughs> And I assumed that was approval. It, I later found out that he was uh, just simply asking for what. But I didn't know that at the time. It's his fault. Yeah, and then Robin was there, Robin Williams. And I said, Robin, what do you think of the whole oh, oh. Kirkland, Kirkland, not Captain Kirk. Oh, wonderful. Oh, get, put, put down that Captain Kirk. No, oh, 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 oh. So I, he never, you know, oh, oh, Kirk, it's good. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 cigar. Like, like a, like a, like a cigar. You know. Uh, oh, Mike, Mike. Oh, oh, water. Oh, oh. So, you know, he never really got to it because he got ripping. You know, as Rob does. Yes, he I got know. The comedy, what, what, what uh, you were saying backstage, um, you have all the, I love Andy because yeah. he has all these terms. He's, he, some of them are from another era, but like right, you, right. you passed my dressing room and went, hey, turkey, you know, like that. Right, but he right, said sure. he was, he, he that term, comedy riff. Yeah, right, right, that's right, right thing. sure. That's what he was on. That's what he was doing. So I went out and bombed. <laughs> Just silence. Yeah. There was not this huge, <laughs> and crickets. It's a good and, thing that cricket was there. And I thought Joe Herbert was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we're, we're, we're desperately tight on time, but we got to get to Alice in Wonderland, which is uh, this thing that you've done for NBC. Yes. You play the Mad Hatter. It's a stretch, Conan, yes. And, <laughs> and again, I'm not one. I'm not, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm very shy. This is all just masking the pain. <laughs> but if I don't get an Emmy nod, there's no justice in Hollywood. <laughs> Let's take a look. We have a clip here. Do we need to set this up or this just is let it? This is at the tea party, the Mad Hatter. We know the character. Um, he is mentally insane. 
And this is Alice, uh, Tina Margarino. Mm -hmm. Majorino, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And who's on here tomorrow, I think. Yeah. And this is NBC uh, Sunday night at 8 p.m. Let's take a look. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little Hitler in that. Little Hitler. Uh, Alice in Wonderland is this Sunday, February 28th at 8 o'clock p.m. right here on good old NBC. Uh, Martin Short, you never, ever disappoint. Thank you so oh, much for coming really? by. Thank Always you hilarious. Much. Martin Short. We'll be right back, folks, some more amazing cats from the International Cat.